On the rooftop a man is trying to push the girl down. He grabbed the girl's neck tightly. The moment the girl fell from above, she met the eyes of Ha Beck who was on the phone. Ha Beck panicked and dropped his phone. A second later, Ha Beck rushed out the glass door to catch So Ah who was falling freely. Ha Beck at that moment turned into a water dragon and wrapped itself around So Ah. The two finally landed safely. So Ah is the female director of a mental hospital and Ha Beck is the water god. Because God in the divine world discovered that colored water. This represents the imminent arrival of a new emperor. The divine world is also divided into three separate regions, heaven, earth and water. But in the waters of Ha Beck is the brightest emperor. If you want to ascend the throne smoothly, you must have a jade seal made from three sacred stones. But these three stones are wandering everywhere on earth. But if Ha Beck wants to succeed the throne, he must personally go to earth to find that stone. God gave Ha Beck the coordinates of the three sacred stones. There is also a seal and God also said that on earth there is a slave of the gods. They promised that they would obey the gods. And this seal can awaken them. But Ha Beck arrogantly said that he was the god of water. How can I find a mortal like that to help me? When he came to this world, Ha Beck also brought along his subordinate Su Ri. That day, So Ah was sitting by the riverside, lamenting when the new epidemic would end. Suddenly, a shooting star flew past So Ah quickly, wishing for the end of the pandemic in 2022. But the next second, something hit her forehead, causing So Ah to faint. It turned out that Ha Beck himself had knocked her out at the moment he descended to the mortal world. Ha Beck gently laid So Ah down on the ground, as he had hastily descended without his clothes. In a hurry, he took a shirt from So Ah's bag and quickly wrapped it around himself. Ha Beck thought it was an honor for So Ah that he had worn her clothes. After dressing, Dressing, ha Beck woke So Ah up. However, she was unconscious and unresponsive. Seeing this, Ha Beck forcefully slapped So Ah's forehead. When So Ah finally regained consciousness, Ha Beck was nowhere to be found. She looked around bewilderedly, then checked her bag, finding that her belongings were gone. So Ah searched but couldn't find her belongings anywhere. Upon hearing So Ah curse him as a thief, Ha Beck wanted to teach her a lesson upon his return. However, as he bent down to examine what he was wearing, he thought it was best to calculate for another time. Not long after, the plump Su Ri also found Ha Beck. It was then that Ha Beck realized Su Ri was wearing his clothes. Ha Beck reluctantly demanded that Su Ri give back his clothes. After changing, Ha Beck discovered that the map with the coordinates of the missing stone had disappeared. Su Ri advised Ha Beck to use his superpower to locate the object. When Ha Beck closed his eyes to concentrate, he realized he had lost his superpower at some point. As the two were about to seek help in the mortal world, they couldn't find the seal anywhere. Su Ri felt there was nothing left to say to Ha Beck. Su Ri prepared to change into a more decent outfit before leaving but not before reminding Ha Beck not to give orders recklessly to others because in the mortal world, no one knew him. Ha Beck agreed, and as soon as Su Ri left, he felt his magic should not disappear like this. He walked to the water fountain and closed his eyes slowly, murmuring, I am Ha Beck, I am Ha Beck. At that moment, the water fountain began to work. So Ah, who had just arrived, was also surprised by the sight before her. Ha Beck looked at the water fountain with immense pride, thinking that his superpower had finally returned. However, he had no idea that an employee was checking the fountain's quality. When the fountain stopped, Ha Beck saw So Ah standing opposite him. So Ah also saw him, and Ha Beck was about to use his superpower to teach her a lesson, just because she had scolded him as a thief earlier. Transitioning to the scene where Ha Beck is being chased by a wild boar, So Ah quickly pulls him into the trunk of the car, but the wild boar shows no intention of letting them off. After a while, So Ah opens the trunk, only to find the boar still standing outside, even smiling. Frightened, So Ah quickly shuts the trunk door again, seeking refuge in Ha Beck's embrace. Suddenly, a gunshot is heard outside, and immediately, all sound ceases. The trunk is opened, revealing that Su Ri had gone to buy oil and has returned. Ha Beck and So Ah step out and inquire what happened. Su Ri responds responds that a hunter had come and scared the wild boar away. Then, the three of them head back to the city. So Ah assumes that Ha Beck cannot drive. Ha Beck humorously responds, I've never driven a car before, but it seems I did pretty well just now. So Ah stammers, you don't know how to drive. Ha Beck retorts, as driving something you can eat, implying he doesn't have a driver's license either. So Ah immediately demands he stop the car. Ha Beck slyly laughs and presses the accelerator even harder. Eventually, he stops the car by the roadside. As So Ah snatches the car keys and prepares to leave for home, Ha Beck declares loudly that her family promised to obey the heavenly realm. So Ah laughs foolishly, unable to believe it's true. Seeing her reaction, Ha Beck decides not to wake her. He decides to use a final resort and slowly moves closer to plant a kiss on So Ah's lips, asserting that she is now his. She should feel honored because a deity has kissed her. While So Ah is still dazed, Su Ri rushes over, embraces Ha Beck, and runs off. So Ah's expression remains one of bewilderment. Ha Beck intends to go to her and explain, but Su Ri pulls him back, warning him that if he goes there now, it will lead to a big misunderstanding. 
understanding, so Ah returns home but remains unsettled. Even when she looks in the mirror, she sees the image of the two kissing. Ha Beck, in his anguish, finds no place to go and ends up sleeping in the castle using his powers. The next day, Su Ri took Ha Beck to a skateboarding competition. Su Ri begged Ha Beck to participate in the competition in order to win the prize. Only by doing so could they survive in the human world. Ha Beck initially had no intention of joining, but with Su Ri persistently coaxing him, he had no choice but to agree. Standing on the side, he observed others playing and immediately understood the techniques. Ha Beck approached the organizers and declared that he wanted to claim all the prizes. Then, he emulated the style of the previous contestant, confidently grabbing the skateboard, and started to perform. With his remarkable skills, he left the spectators in awe. Coincidentally, So Ah was also present. With her extraordinary performance, the audience continued to applaud without pause. Ha Beck spotted So Ah and saw her trying to escape. He abandoned the game and chased after her, the two of them playing a game of cat and mouse. So Ah swiftly ran into an underground passage, with Ha Beck in pursuit. However, the scene that greeted him made him shudder with fear. In the tunnel, there was a group of people practicing martial arts. Unbeknownst to him, So Ah had also hidden among them. Ha Beck scanned the area, and just as the performance had ended, everyone hurried forward, but Ha Beck stood in the middle of the path, refusing to budge. As a result, an old lady grabbed him by the collar and threw him out. Frightened, Ha Beck could only retreat to his floating castle. It was a waste of time as he didn't get the prize, and So Ah was nowhere to be found. After listening to Su Ri's complaints for a while, Ha Beck decided to get up and look for So Ah. He then handed Su Ri So Ah's business card and they drove to the address listed. Ha Beck stared at the steering wheel and told the doctor to let him drive, causing the two of them to be thrown out by the driver. As an old man was crossing the street, a young man came to help him, but the old man refused. Shortly after, a girl approached, but she was also declined by the old man. Suddenly, So Ah appeared. At first, she ran past the old man but then slowed down as if something occurred to her. She took out her phone, pretended to step back while playing with her phone, so she could walk alongside the old man. It was because she could protect the old man best from this position. Because the old man walked slowly, So Ah intentionally slowed down too. Every now and then, So Ah glanced at the cars nearby fearing they might veer toward her. Her actions, however, made the old man feel self-conscious. When they crossed the street, the old man turned back to thank So Ah. Ha Beck is extremely difficult right now. Having lost his magic and having no money, he just wandered around. At this time, there was a fat guy in the restaurant eating. He also comes from the spirit world. While eating, I accidentally looked out the window and saw Ha Beck. He felt like he was sprayed with glue then followed Ha Beck. But it didn't take long for Ha Beck to discover him. To confirm whether Ha Beck really lost his superpowers or not, the fat guy jumped in and kissed Ha Beck. After a while, he was sure that Ha Beck had lost his ability. The opponent even threatened that Ha Beck would soon encounter trouble. Hearing that, Ha Beck gritted his teeth and gums in anger, since being forced to kiss Ha Beck suddenly felt hungry. When he saw the boy opposite him eating sausage, he gulped. Although he did not look directly at the boy, it was clear that Ha Beck was always looking in that direction. Ha Beck angrily asked Su Ri why she didn't take a taxi. Poor Su Ri took out the little change she had left and said it wasn't enough. Ha Beck could only sigh helplessly. At this time, Ha Beck looked looked at the girl next to him who was playing on the phone. Ha Beck recognized the girl on the phone as the person he was looking for. So after that girl got off the train, Ha Beck also suddenly followed. Su Ri still sat in the subway watching the boy eat. After calming down, I discovered Ha Beck was no longer there. When I was about to run out, the train door immediately closed. Just like that, Ha Beck watched the train pass before his eyes. Just as the train was leaving, a mental patient saw Ha Beck. It seems he feels that Ha Beck is a god. Then he bought Ha Beck a lot of food. Ha Beck saw a lot of delicious food to displayed before his eyes. He constantly struggled with the demon inside him, because he thought that being a god, he could not eat or drink. But right now he is extremely hungry. Seeing the chicken thighs in front of Ha Beck's eyes, he could only swallow his saliva. When that man put the chicken thigh in Ha Beck's hand, the guy picked up his phone and took a photo. He was about to post it online to brag to her friend that he had met a god. Then he asked Ha Beck some macro questions. But Ha Beck's mind right now is only thinking about fried chicken. Ha Beck continuously swallowed his saliva. So Ah over here is looking for that mental patient. Turns out he is So Ah's patient. So Ah was surfing and saw his post. When he arrived at the designated location so that Ha Beck wouldn't recognize him, So Ah quickly picked up the newspaper on the side of the road and covered her face. Ha Beck told So Ah's patient that there were no superheroes in the sky. However, he also insisted that superheroes didn't exist. The young man became enraged at Ha Beck's statement. Ha Beck stood up and approached him, calling him useless. Ha Beck introduced himself as the next water god, but the young man remained adamant and refused to believe. Learning that a superhero couldn't save the world, he questioned the purpose of his life. Saying that, he jumped into the river. So Ah watched her patient swaying in the water but didn't dare jump in because she had nearly drowned before. As she looked at the patient calling her name from underwater. Ha Beck stopped her as she was about to dive in. Ha Beck told So Ah to hold onto the chicken thigh and not drop it. 
He then jumped into the lake. The muscular man did indeed fall from the sky. Since he had kissed so awe, she had been frequently hearing strange sounds. What's even scarier was that she also heard singing in the toilet. I spin around, I feel very happy, the mysterious singing went. So Ah hadn't had a single day of peaceful sleep or good food. It seemed she had reached the brink of collapse. Ha Beck, after the encounter with the eccentric man, immediately felt a hunger he had never experienced before. After eating a delicious cake by the river, Ha Beck noticed an old man staring at him intently. Ha Beck stuffed the remaining cakes into his mouth and then sneakily hid the bag behind his back, as if he was afraid the man would eat all his food. Meanwhile, Soa had to rely on sleeping pills every day. Unable to bear it any longer, she finally went to find Ha Beck. Ha Beck told Soa that if she couldn't bear it anymore, she should listen to him. Otherwise, the situation would persist forever. Soa still didn't believe him. She didn't believe that there were deities in this world. But when Soa returned to her office, she seemed to be talking to the cactus. Do you know that you spilled milk on me the other day? I couldn't hear anything. I am the owner of my soul. She shouted shouted in the room. As she was shouting, a young man walked in. As soon as he walked in, he was scolded by So Ah and awkwardly walked out. Once outside, he began arguing with the cactus. Why don't you say anything? Do you have nothing to say? Are you sleeping? Suddenly, So Ah realized her inappropriate behavior. Why was she acting like a madwoman? To reduce stress, she attended a class reunion with her friends. Unexpectedly, she was ridiculed by her classmates. She even had her shirt torn by her colleagues. The other party continued to cling to So Ah nonstop. Fortunately, Ha Beck appeared in time to relieve her. Ha Beck says that So Ah who just ran past is his person. If you want to do anything to her, you must get my permission. The girl heard that and couldn't say anything so she just left. Ha Beck saw So Ah's pitiful appearance. Then he took off his jacket to wear for So Ah. Three people took a bus to a phone store. Ha Beck wants So Ah to buy her a phone to thank him for saving her earlier. Ha Beck then told So Ah about what he was looking for, but So Ah didn't believe it. The two of them sat together by the riverbank and looked up at the screen in front of them. So Ah asked if he was a god, would he be able to transform into cars, houses or trees? Ha Beck says even if it's gold I can transform it for you. After hearing this, So Ah felt very happy. So Ah asked if he could show himself right now. Ha Beck replied that he can't do it now because he has lost his superpowers. At that moment, the Monday that Beck was looking for appeared on the big screen. But she is the god of the water kingdom. Only then did So Ah know what Ha Beck was looking for. Mu Ra is the goddess of the Korean nation. So Ah didn't think that Mu Ra would be willing to meet Ha Beck. But Ha Beck insisted that she would be very happy to meet him. After all, he is the ruler of a region. Upon hearing this, So Ah felt incredibly powerless and could only take Ha Beck to meet Mu Ra. Before leaving, Ha Beck said that if he met Mu Ra, his powers would be restored, and he would give her a pile of gold. He believed that meeting Mu Ra would help him find the missing stone and restore his powers. However, Ha Beck was unaware that not only did Mu Ra refuse to meet him, but she also gifted him a large present, a pair of earcuffs. At that time, Mu Ra was already a top A-list celebrity, preparing for a photo shoot. Ha Beck greeted her loudly, but it seemed that Mu Ra was not pleased to see him. When Ha Beck approached her, he was stopped by her guards. Although Mu Ra saw everything, she pretended not to hear or see anything. Unable to bear it any longer, Ha Beck started to physically confront the guards. Despite being mortals, they couldn't contend with the divine Ha Beck. Ha Beck gently threw the guards to the ground, but he had already lost his powers. The guards managed to capture Ha Beck, so Ah, upon hearing the news, rushed to the scene but was pushed aside due to her delicate nature. Ha Beck, seeing this, became extremely angry. Mu Ra, who was sitting nearby, saw everything that he did and approached him with determination. The atmosphere was still extremely tense. Mu Ra glanced at So Ah and then down at Ha Beck, who was holding So Ah. Ah's hand. Mu Ra suddenly slapped Ha Beck hard. So Ah, seeing this, became furious and handed Mu Ra a business card from the mental hospital before pulling Ha Beck away. So Ah asked Ha Beck if he truly wanted to meet the deity. Ha Beck promptly replied that he indeed wanted to. Upon hearing this, So Ah immediately called the shaman. Before long, Ha Beck was brought in front of a shaman, but the shaman's techniques could only deceive mortal eyes. The person in front of the shaman was now a deity. After the meeting, Ha Beck, furious, went to see So Ah. Ha Beck felt that So Ah was teasing him rather than trusting him. He expressed his disappointment with So Ah. So Ah, after being reproached by Ha Beck, remained silent and left. But as she walked up the stairs, a masked man grabbed her and pulled her away. Su Ri was waiting downstairs for Ha Beck. When she looked up, she saw So Ah being tightly held by someone on the rooftop. Su Ri quickly called Ha Beck to inform him that So Ah was struggling with someone and about to be pushed down. At this crucial moment, Ha Beck regained his powers and rescued So Ah. So Ah lay in Ha Beck's arms, speechless, while Su Ri was overjoyed to see that Ha Beck had regained his strength, ensuring that they would no longer have to endure poverty. They then returned to the floating castle. Su Ri picked up a stone and placed it in Ha Beck's hand. 
asking him to turn it into gold, but Ha Beck couldn't fulfill Su Ri's wish and sat down disappointedly. Ha Beck glanced at So Ah, who was lying next to him. So Ah later regained consciousness, thinking that what had just happened was just a dream, but with Ha Beck's help, So Ah was able to come back to her senses. However, So Ah laid down and thought it was just a dream. It wasn't until she heard Su Ri ask Ha Beck why his powers disappeared again that So Ah realized that what she had seen wasn't a dream. So Ah couldn't believe what had just happened because she was so frightened that she ran away. As she wandered on the road, she remembered the scene earlier when Ha Beck saved her. So Ah thought that these images were the result of her own guilt caused by her disbelief in the existence of divine beings. At that moment, she remembered the man who had pushed her down the previous day. So Ah felt that the man was always beside her, and in fear, she ran while looking back. As a result, Ha Beck and Su Ri were able to enter So Ah's house. When they arrived, Ha Beck discovered a man who was always hanging around So Ah's house. He looked exactly like the person who had pushed So Ah off the rooftop the other day. Even during the daytime, the man appeared in an unusual manner. So Ah took the two men to buy clothes at a roadside shop. However, Ha Beck didn't feel happy because the clothes were not branded. The shop owner immediately said that as long as your body is beautiful, you can still look good even in cheap clothes. Only upon hearing these words did Ha Beck feel a bit better. After buying clothes, they went to eat noodles together. But as they were about to leave, Ha Beck noticed the strange man. The next day, the three of them went out to relax. When So Ah was leaving, the strange man poured water into her engine and then adjusted something in the engine. Then he loosened the screws of the bike stand. Could it be that he wanted to cause So Ah's demise in a vehicular accident? However, he didn't realize that Ha Beck, standing from a distance, saw everything, and the nearby camera recorded everything as well. Ha Beck intended to go and catch him but he suddenly stopped, contemplating something. Ha Beck remembered the day he could regain his strength was when So Ah faced danger. But after So Ah was safe, his strength disappeared again. Therefore, he wanted to bet on this time to see if he could regain his strength when So Ah was in danger. When they were preparing to return, Ha Beck quickly said that he wanted to drive. So Ah knew that Ha Beck didn't have a driver's license, so she didn't agree. But Ha Beck said he was a god, leaving So Ah feeling helpless and resigned to sitting in the back seat. When the three of them left, the mysterious man appeared delighted, driving at 180 km per hour when the speed limit was only 70. Ha Beck tried to weave through the road, surpassing all the red lights on the way. So Ah couldn't bear it anymore and asked Ha Beck to slow down. Ha Beck immediately pressed the brakes to slow down but discovered that the brakes were broken. As the car was about to hit the car in front, Ha Beck managed to swerve. More and more dangerous cars were running marathon style towards them, and to avoid harming pedestrians, Ha Beck drove the car into a closed tunnel. Su Ri was so scared that she held onto the handle tightly. At that moment, Ha Beck intended to use his power to stop the car. He tried several times, but it was all in vain. Ha Beck turned around and saw So Ah crying in fear. Until the last moment, his superpower still hadn't returned. The speed of the car was getting faster and faster, and there were no more roads ahead. Ha Beck quickly opened the rear window and told Su Ri to take the wheel for him. Then, Ha Beck climbed out of the car and stood on the roof. He waved his hand towards So Ah, who was extremely frightened. Seeing the danger in front of her, So Ah could only trust Ha Beck. Ha Beck pulled So Ah out of the window, and the two stood on the car's roof. The car was getting closer to the dangerous spot. Ha Beck reminded Su Ri to save herself. Ha Beck told So Ah not to be afraid because she was his person. At the most dangerous moment, his strength had returned. But before So Ah could fully recover, the car exploded due to the strong collision. Ha Beck managed to protect So Ah, but Su Ri was still inside the car. Ha Beck learned how to cook just by watching people cook on TV. Because he was a divine being sent from the heavens, he then got up and went to the kitchen, putting on an apron and picking up vegetables. With his nimble hands, he quickly washed all the vegetables. He then cut the bell peppers, onions, and mushrooms. Under his skillful hands, everything was neatly cut and looked appetizing. Even the squid was cut in a mouth-watering manner. Just pouring the oil looked so handsome. Next were various stir-fried dishes, all of which looked exceptionally well cooked under his hands. The finale was a sprinkle of pepper on a well-laid table, which was very eye-catching. Su Ri arranged the chairs and table outside on the balcony, while So Ah was responsible for decoration. Ha Beck arranged the cutlery neatly like a five-star restaurant. With everyone's effort, a luxurious feast was brought to life. First, Ha Beck cut a piece of steak and passed it to So Ah. So Ah looked at him with a slightly moved heart. The next day, the three of them went to find the divine stone. As the host opened the door, So Ah was startled. It turned out that the person they were meeting was her ex-boyfriend from her school days. An Bin then invited them inside for a drink. Suddenly, a glass of wine in a cup spilled out with a flick of An Bin's hand. 
hand, the water flowed in front of Ha Bek but couldn't come any closer. An Bin made the water splash in Su Ri's face, causing her to faint again. Ha Bek asked An Bin about the divine stone. Surprisingly, An Bin said that Ha Bek just needed to get the stone from Mu Ra's place, and he would be willing to give him the second divine stone. An Bin's greeting made So Ah faint again, and even Ha Bek sitting next to her couldn't bear it anymore. An Bin even mocked Ha Bek for being hungry, but Ha Bek believed it was just a difficulty before achieving victory. Shortly after, Ha Bek carried So Ah away. After taking So Ah home, the two of them went to meet Mu Ra. However, Mu Ra said the same thing as An Bin, that if An Bin gave Ha Bek that stone, she would also give him the divine stone. Saying that, Mu Ra turned her back and left, apologizing to Ha Bek, I really didn't want to do this. On the other side, An Bin found So Ah and forced her into the car without saying anything. Ha Bek, who saw this scene, chased after them non-stop. But because he had lost his divine power, how could he catch up with the car? On the other hand, An Bin used his divine power to drive the car as fast as the wind. So Ah took out her phone to call the police. An Bin flicked his hand, and the phone fell onto the road. Just a few seconds later, the two arrived at a bridge. As soon as So Ah got out of the car, she vomited. On the other side, An Bin used his strength to fly up and over the top of the bridge. An Bin started calling the wind and then flew down from the bridge. An Bin took out a red-colored bottle of medicine and said it was a type of medicine that could help Ha Bek forget about the divine stone. If successful, So Ah would undoubtedly become wealthy. Upon hearing this, So Ah was elated and reached for the bottle of medicine. However, not wanting An Bin to be too happy, she dropped the bottle on the ground and stepped on it. So Ah said that even though Ha Bek's power comes and goes, a god without power is still a god. At this time, Ha Bek was sitting in Mu's car and chasing after An Bin. Maybe any god would drive this fast. Very quickly they reached An Bin's deck. As soon as he got out of the car, Ha Bek waved for So Ah to come to him. But An Bin waved his hand, causing her to step back further. Further cracks began to appear on the ground. An Bin snapped his fingers and a cloud immediately appeared. An Bin did these things just to test Ha Bek. Is it true that when So Ah is in danger, his strength will return? Then An Bin flicked it again and it started to rain heavily. So Ah was now extremely devastated and screamed loudly. Ha Bek was so angry that his fingers clenched tightly together. Su Ri next to her couldn't stand it anymore. To continue to anger Ha Bek An Bin snapped his thumb again. It's raining harder and harder in So Ah's place. Because So Ah was extremely afraid of water, she was about to not be able to stand anymore. Su Ri was worried about her so she knelt down in front of An Bin but it had no effect. So Ah is in an extremely dangerous situation but Ha Bek's strength has not recovered yet. When An Bin was about to snap his fingers again, Ha Bek started to mumble something. Mu Ra and An Bin felt extremely shocked for a moment. It turns out that while in the divine world, they accidentally lost the stone. Seeing that Ha Bek knew the truth, An Bin could only take back his magic. The cracks under So Ah's feet also gradually healed. Very quickly everything returned to its orbit. So Ah was now able to slowly stand up. Without saying a word, she approached and gave An Bin an earful. Mu saw this and widened his eyes at her. So Ah then walked towards Ha Bek, showing helplessly disappointed eyes. Ha Bek looked at her and wanted to say something but in the end didn't know what to say. So Ah drove Mu's car out to everyone's bewilderment. At this time, Ha Bek gave An Bin a punch. Night falls so Ah goes to her mother's grave. She told her all the pain she had gone through, but now she can no longer hear her mother's comforting words. When So Ah was pulling weeds on her mother's grave, she was shocked to realize where she was. So Ah said goodbye to her mother in fear and left. When I got back to the gate, I saw Ha Bek standing there waiting for me. The two of them looked at each other but didn't know what to say. As So Ah walked past, Ha Bek held her hand tightly and said, I promise you from now on I won't put you in danger because of our affairs anymore. And I will protect you because that is also my responsibility. Hearing Ha Bek's sincere words, So Ah's emotional wound is almost healed. Ha Bek held So Ah's hand tightly then waved his hand to her. Ha Bek returns to his room and remembers So Ah's question. What crime did my ancestors commit? Why do my descendants still have to obey the gods? It turns out that 1200 years ago he committed a crime and asked for forgiveness. So Ha Bek's mother punished So Ah's family to obey the gods from generation to generation. Moreover, there is only one child in a lifetime. Once that child is born the mother will have to die. The father's life is salty, the child's life is thirsty, which is also the reason why So Ah's mother died early. However, Ha Bek did not intend to tell So Ah these things. Early the next morning So Ah went to look for Ha Bek. She was about to return the car to Mu, but Ha Bek said that the car had already been transferred to her. So Ah happily drove the car to work. She was very excited because this was the first time she had a luxury car like this. On this side, Ha Bek once again found Mu Ra and An Bin. They took out two stones. Ha Bek was very angry because they had lost the sacred stones. Moreover, they constantly accuse each other. Thirteen years ago, because they couldn't stand each other, they fought. Unexpectedly, two stones were thrown out at the same time. The two were rushing to find two stones when they discovered that one stone was missing. Ha Bek blames how 
you two can be so irresponsible. An Bin replied, didn't he also lose the map when he went down to earth? Ha Beck heard that and didn't know what to say. Over here, so A is planning to sell the land of the gods, but she did not know that once the land was sold, humanity would be in danger. But the people who buy this land are not human either. They are the descendants of gods and humans called Hu Yi. Ha Beck can learn everything at first sight, but the only thing he couldn't do was take pictures. Ha Beck took photos with So Ah in a hundred different ways. In the end, there was no real picture. But even so, when they looked at the photo, they still smiled brightly. After getting three magic stones, Ha Beck will return. Because without you everything would be in chaos. After that, the three of them were about to go eat when So Ah immediately received a phone call from her friend. Because there was something they wanted to talk about, the three of them went to see So Ah's friend. The psychic pulled So Ah aside and said that she had met a teacher who spoke very accurately. There is a high possibility that he is the legendary god. Regardless of whether So Ah agreed or not, the psychic immediately pulled her into the house. The psychic introduced So Ah's situation to the person sitting inside the curtain. So Ah originally did not believe because there was a real god next to her. Without beating around the bush, So Ah immediately stood up. But just after taking a few steps, the person in the curtain told So Ah the situation in her house. So So Ah had to believe that statement. He also told So Ah that there was a fake god in her house and she had to chase him away. Only then did her love life and career go smoothly. Even though So Ah tries to claim that they are not fake gods, but the person in the curtain still tried to emphasize that it was fake. Ha Beck heard that and went to confront him. It turns out that the person in the curtain is the person who kissed Ha Beck at the beginning of the movie. He tried to beg Ha Beck to spare his life. When Ha Beck wasn't paying attention, he pushed So Ah and ran away. It wasn't until Ha Beck rushed out that Su Ri realized what was going on. Two people with three legs and four legs chased that beggar. They chased each other to a door that just happened to be opened by a side psychic, creating a way for him to escape. The naive guy put the psychic down on the ground and chased after Ha Beck. The beggar with a heavy body tried to run forward, and Ha Beck and Su Ri are also trying their best to chase after. The beggar who ran in front of Ha Beck also followed closely behind. You two are like Tom and Jerry, chasing each other endlessly. Finally, they chased each other to the rooftop. The beggar jumped straight down and hid himself on the ground. Ha Beck was so angry that his stomach couldn't stop growling. It must be because he used up too many calories. Then the three of them went to the restaurant to eat. Su Ri explained that Ha Beck had been kissed by that beggar before, so he felt hungry. So Ah asks what they planned to do if they catch him. Su Ri replied of course to help Ha Beck no longer feel hungry. So Ah wondered if it was to let him kiss Ha Beck again. But Ha Beck thinks it's better to starve than do that. As long as you return to the fairy world, your hunger will automatically go away. After eating, the three of them returned to their car. So Ah asked Ha Beck about An Bin's home address because she wanted to go there to pick up the forgotten land sale contract. But Ha Beck replied that there was no need because he had already already torn that contract into hundreds of pieces. Su Ri saw that and was extremely angry with Ha Beck, because he doesn't know how important that land sale money is to So Ah. Ha Beck replied that she could sell anything but absolutely could not sell that land. So Ah angrily got out of the car and left. When she was about to cross the street, a car came rushing towards her. Ha Beck shouted So Ah's name but when he ran over, he couldn't see her anymore. Ha Beck shouted loudly, but when he turned around, he saw An Bin holding So Ah in his arms. It turns out that An Bin used his power to save So Ah in danger. So Ah is still angry because Ha Beck tore up her contract. So Ah brought the tattered contract to find Hu Yi and wanted him to sign it for her. Hu Yi sure So Ah has encountered something difficult. But because the seal is still at the company, I can only sign it tomorrow. Then the two of them worked together to prune the trees. At this time, Ha Beck and Mu went to An Bin to the temple. They came here to investigate why that magic stone went missing that year. Unexpectedly, they found a bloody stone. Mu held the stone in her hand and with the premonition of a god, she knew that this was human blood. But all that belongs to humans will be purified by the earth here. But the strange thing is that the bloodstain here is still intact. They guessed that this bloodstain was definitely related to the gods. But God never sheds blood. Because they wanted to find out the truth, they went to the beggar god. If this is truly human blood, the traces will be erased from that land. If that land cannot erase this bloodstain, it can only be that person is related to the divine world. That person has the power to be half human and half god. 2600 years ago, a priest told them, because gods are born naturally without father or mother. Some gods, wanting to have a child of their own, had sex with mortals. That's why the baby was born, half human, half god. The child will also be like a mortal person experiencing birth, old age, sickness and death, but can also be like immortal immortals. He has the power to put out fire. An Bin asked the priest if he was stronger compared to Ha Beck. Even the priest cannot answer this question. Hu Yi and the blind girl were planting trees together. As Hu Yi was preparing to leave, the girl screamed as a caterpillar landed on her hand. Hu Yi quickly ran over and flicked the caterpillar away, then embraced the girl, comforting her. 
As the two left, the caterpillar suddenly burst into flames. That night, Mu Ra took Ha Bek to Hu Yi's hotel for dinner. Hu Yi approached slowly, greeting everyone. Ha Bek looked up at Hu Yi and realized he was the person the divine healer had mentioned. Mu Ra introduced everyone to Hu Yi, who extended his hand to greet Ha Bek. Ha Bek stared at his hand without any intention of reciprocating. The atmosphere became awkward. Hu Yi then chuckled and walked away. Just then, So Ah entered and Hu Yi whispered something to her. Seeing their cheerful interaction, Ha Bek felt a surge of anger within him. He stood up and started to walk towards them, but he was stopped. Ha Bek took another step and leaned close to Hu Yi's ear. I found you, he whispered. Hu Yi, upon hearing this, looked a little scared. He pretended to be confused and asked what Ha Bek was talking about. Ha Bek replied, asking whether Hu Yi would go through the cycle of life and death like his mother or be immortal like his father. Ha Bek then took out a blood-stained stone from his pocket and asked Hu Yi if it was his blood. Hu Yi was taken aback. The tense atmosphere was suddenly broken as Mu Ra intervened. Hu Yi took the opportunity to leave. Ha Bek told Mu Ra and An Bin about this incident. Everyone was astonished. Could he be stronger than Ha Bek, they wondered. Su Ri's profanity earned her a rebuke from Mu Ra. She blamed Ha Bek for exposing Hu Yi when he was already losing his powers. Ha Bek believed it was the only way to reveal his true nature and his likely connection to the sacred stone. An Bin flicked the steering wheel, and the car automatically started moving without a driver. With another flick, the car's speed suddenly increased and raced straight ahead. Hu Yi saw the car but made no move to avoid it. They did all this just to check if Hu Yi was truly half deity and half human. However, Hu Yi refused to budge. Mu Ra had to use her magic to steer the car because she was afraid it would hit someone if not stopped. Hu Yi also noticed and looked at An Bin for a moment. Mu Ra told Ha Bek about the incident, while Su Ri was swaying on the lake, heading towards the shaman. Since their last meeting, the shaman had fallen in love with Su Ri, but she was somewhat dissatisfied. Ha Bek fulfilled his promise and went to meet Hu Yi, where he noticed something on Hu Yi's chest. He tore open his opponent's shirt and indeed found a glowing spot on Hu Yi's chest. Hu Yi, of course, didn't appreciate Ha Bek's violence at all. Ha Bek asked why the mark was there, and Hu Yi tightly grasped his hand, but Ha Bek continued to inquire about the emblem on his chest. The symbol belonged to the earth nation, so there was no way a demigod would possess it. Ha Bek threatened that even with this mark, Hu Yi couldn't become the god of all things. As the two argued intensely, Mu Ra appeared and used her superpowers to pull Ha Bek back. Due to the loud noise, the blind girl had come over to see what was happening. Hu Yi went to comfort her. It turned out that the girl's parents had been killed by Hu Yi's power, so he had been blaming himself and had adopted her. Mu Ra saw through everything. The next day, they used the girl to arrange a meeting with Hu Yi, but when Hu Yi arrived, the girl had already returned home. An Bin asked asked Hu Yi about the Earth Nation's mark on his body. To avoid being bothered further, Hu Yi confessed that the first time he left the Divine Realm, he was suddenly struck by lightning. Seconds later, a man pinned Hu Yi down, and they were both struck by lightning. That was how the mark of the Earth Nation transferred to him. Hu Yi was so terrified that he abandoned the man and fled. An Bin felt extremely angry upon hearing this. On the other side, Ha Bek was dressed in vibrant clothes, waiting to pick up So Ah. Suddenly, Ha Bek stopped and saw So Ah looking at something by the roadside. On closer inspection, Ha Bek was stunned to see three glowing spots on the map on the pen. He hurried over and snatched the map from So Ah. It was the map of the coordinates of the three lost stones that he had misplaced when he descended to the mortal world due to the collision with So Ah. It turned out that the map had been hidden in her pen. Two people followed the map to find three stones. After walking for a while, I saw a man digging something. When the man turned around, Ha Bek was stunned speechless. Because he is the guardian of the stones they have been looking for for so long. Today Mu Ra accidentally met his rival So Ah. Mu Ra used his sharp words to threaten So Ah. But So Ah didn't like her so she turned around and left. Looking at Mu's appearance at this moment, An Bin couldn't help but laugh out loud. A few people stood waiting for Sang Yu to wake up. Hu Yi this side is using his magic in the garden. But as soon as he touched the flower, it immediately withered. Hu Yi is sad because his power is the power to destroy everything. This scene was seen by Ya Ya because she was so scared that she ran into the house. But Hu Yi has already discovered her. Because Ya Ya is a human being, she doesn't believe what she just saw. She tried to console herself that it was probably just dizziness. Ya Ya then went to Hu Yi and told him about what he had just seen. Hu Yi thought that Ya Ya saw through him right when he was about to strike. Ya Ya asked him again if he knew how to do magic and when did he learn it. Those naive words saved her life. But Hu Yi during this time could not control his power. In order not to be discovered by Ya Ya, Hu Yi hugged her. This action seems to have made Ya Ya think a lot. Wait until Hu Yi can control his power and then release her. Hu Yi then told the other person to get out of here immediately. At this time the beggar found Hu Yi. It turns out that when they were in the divine world, the two of them knew each other. The rotten beggar told Hu Yi how Ha Bek discovered him. When the rotten beggar was about to leave, 
Hu Yi immediately called him back. Hu Yi asks about something related to So Ah. So Ah over here is walking with Ha Beck. They saw some children playing on the swings. So Ah ran to show the kids how to play properly. But the end result left her feeling dizzy. All these scenes were seen by Hu Yi from afar. The rotten beggar guesses that So Ah is a slave of the gods. Hu Yi heard that and was extremely surprised. The next day the secretary informed Hu Yi about the land recovery meeting. At this moment, he suddenly remembered So Ah's land. It is very likely that it is the legendary god. So Hu Yi quickly drove to the temple. When he got out of the car, he found everything extremely familiar. Hu Yi recalled the night when he ran out from that divine gate, heavily wounded and bleeding. He rushed to find the stone with bloodstains from that night. Now Hu Yi was certain that the stone with the blood Ha Beck held was his own, and this must be the divine gate from the legend. He remembered every detail of this place, as it was where he had been abandoned before. Although Hu Yi laughed loudly, his laughter contained a sense of discontentment with the divine realm. Suddenly, Hu Yi was struck down by a fist, and it was An Bin who knew that Hu Yi had come here to buy the divine gate. An Bin asked if Hu Yi had deliberately approached So Ah for this reason, but Hu Yi denied it, though An Bin didn't believe him. Hu Yi began speaking recklessly, questioning why the power of a god was meant for destruction. He expressed his desire to destroy the divine realm and claimed responsibility for Sang Yu's situation. He then turned and walked away, leaving An Bin at the divine gate. An Bin went home and recounted what happened to Ha Beck. Ha Beck thought about what So Ah had previously said about selling the land. It was because of money that she wanted to sell the land, and if So Ah had the money, she wouldn't sell it. Ha Beck told An Bin that So Ah's decision to sell the land was his idea. Upon hearing this, An Bin became furious, berating Ha Beck for selling the divine gate for a girl in the human world. Suddenly, the phone rang, and upon picking it up, An Bin found out that So Ah was meeting Hu Yi. He instructed Ha Beck to go and see what his daughter was up to. So Ah and Hu Yi were discussing the land sale at a cafe, unaware that Ha Beck had been watching everything. When Hu Yi finished, he walked out and saw Ha Beck. Hu Yi approached him, stating that he had no interest in the divine realm but was interested in So Ah. He was certain he would get So Ah because the mortal realm was his territory, and Ha Beck would eventually leave. So Ah stepped outside but didn't see Ha Beck, so she called him. Ha Beck saw So Ah's call but hesitated to answer. Ha Beck had fallen in love with So Ah, and the two embraced and shared a passionate kiss. Suddenly, Mu Ra called to inform them that Sang Yu had awakened. However, Ha Beck wasn't happy because Sang Yu's recovery meant he would soon have to return to the divine realm. So Ah then drove Ha Beck to Mu Ra's house. Sang Yu, recovering his memories, was recounting to everyone what he had been through. Afterward, he gently handed the third stone to Ha Beck, and the three divine stones were finally reunited. Ha Beck seemed very happy, but he didn't say anything on the way back. Meanwhile, Sang Yu kept teasing Mu Ra, saying that she and An Bin were a married couple. Mu Ra got so angry that she abruptly stopped the car and pulled over. Not long after, Ha Beck brought Sang Yu to So Ah's house. As he was about to knock on the door, all the lights in the house suddenly went off. Ha Beck stood outside, pondering for a while. So Ah, at that time, was in her room, seemingly unable to sleep. The next day, Ha Beck finally met So Ah, and after exchanging greetings, they parted ways. Ha Beck wandered the streets, lost in thought. He saw an old man pulling a cart of trash, looking very tired. Ha Beck wanted to help the old man, but he hesitated because he was a god. After much hesitation, Ha Beck finally mustered the courage to act. The old man turned back, smiled, and thanked Ha Beck. Ha Beck felt immense joy in his heart, a joy that was hard to describe. He finally let go and freely helped the old man. The old man, seeing this, abandoned the cart, and Ha Beck rolled up his sleeves and helped him pick up pieces of broken glass. After a while, the two returned home with a cart full of items. The old man sold the cart and earned some money. He gave a part of it to Ha Beck, who hesitated to accept it, but the old man insisted and said that this was the first time he earned money. He told Ha Beck to use it to buy something for his parents. Ha Beck walked on with the small amount of money in his hand, and his eyes fell on a cup in a souvenir shop. Ha Beck remembered So Ah's chipped cup and used the money he had earned to buy a new cup. To his surprise, the shop owner said that the money was not enough. So Ha Beck came up with a plan. He used his handsome appearance to model for the shop owner, and successfully got a pair of cups. Even a roadside stall used his image to advertise their products. Ha Beck brought the cups he had just earned and gave them to So Ha. With a proud expression, he told her not to be so touched, as he was just reminding her to do her duties well. Ha Beck even named the two cups. So Ah held the cups with a delighted expression. As they walked outside, So Ah asked if he had borrowed money from Suri. Ha Beck replied that he had worked hard and earned the money. Saying so, he took out his phone to show So Ah the photos he had taken. He even showed her a sample photo he had just taken. So Ah was deeply moved when she saw the picture. That night, So Ah was working and waited for a long time but still didn't see Hu Yi coming. Ha Beck was worried and called to ask why she wasn't home yet. So Ah said that she still had to wait to examine another patient. At that moment Hu Yi walked in drunk. So Ah was surprised and called Hu Yi then hung up. Ha Beck here also heard that the person So Ah was waiting to be examined was Hu Yi. 
Ha Beck goes to Su Ri and asks for money to go see So Ah. So Ah helped Hu Yi sit down on the chair and discovered that he had a fever. But because I drank alcohol, I couldn't take fever reducing medicine. So So Ah helped Hu Yi take off his coat to cool down. Suddenly Hu Yi hugged her and pushed her down on the sofa. Ha Beck opened the door at that moment and rushed in to see this heartbreaking scene. But at this time Hu Yi was losing consciousness so he did that. So Ah called, causing Hu Yi to wake up and he apologized to her. So Ah noticed that the wound on his arm healed very quickly. Hu Yi was about to explain something when Ha Beck walked over. Ha Beck couldn't watch this anymore so he rushed forward and punched Hu Yi in the face. When Ha Beck was about to throw a second punch, Hu Yi stopped him. Both used eyes as sharp as knives to look at each other. Hu Yi said sorry to So Ah again and quickly left. So Ah wanted to chase Hu Yi but was held back by Ha Beck. That's why the two of them shouted loudly at each other. So Ah wanted to explain to Ha Beck but suddenly thought about their relationship. Originally, they were nothing to each other so there was no need to explain. So So Ah ran out heartbroken, leaving Ha Beck standing there stunned. So Ah walked in the rain for a long, long time. She felt very hurt because Ha Beck didn't trust her. Because there was nowhere else to go, So Ah went to see a psychic. The next morning, when So Ah returned home, she discovered that Ha Beck had stayed up all night waiting for her to return. Ha Beck originally planned to go home last night, but because the door couldn't be locked, he had to stay at the clinic all night. Ha Beck expressed his feelings to So Ah. Ha Beck really hopes So Ah can become his lover. But So Ah refused even though she also loved Ha Beck. But Ha Beck was about to return to where he came from. What does it mean to be in love now? The next day Ha Beck remembers when So Ah rejected his feelings. Ha Beck was extremely sad because he was rejected by a mortal girl. The more Ha Beck thought about it, the more angry he felt. So Ha Beck found An Bin to drink with him. But drinking one cup after another, Ha Beck still didn't feel anything. Ha Beck was so angry that he picked up a bottle of wine to drink. An Bin has never seen Ha Beck in such a state before. So he took out his phone to take a picture as a souvenir. After drinking, Ha Beck went out to talk to the trash can. At this time, some thugs came to tease Ha Beck. But An Bin was still very calm and watched. Not long after that a conflict broke out. It was extremely funny for An Bin to look at Ha Beck in his current form. Because Ha Beck no longer had any strength, he was quickly controlled by the thugs. An Bin snapped his fingers to make the phone stand still while he ran to the rest rescue. With just a few simple moves, he defeated these guys easily. Ha Beck stood next to him and applauded. An Bin then threw the drunken Ha Beck fishing rod to So Ah to take care of. But when the two people went upstairs, they unfortunately fell. That fall caused Ha Beck to fall on So Ah. So Ah wanted to push Ha Beck away from her, but because he was too heavy, she couldn't push him. In the end, So Ah had to use all her strength to push him away. An Bin showed the video to Mu Ra. After watching the footage, Mu Ra couldn't understand why Ha Beck acted that way, hesitating to return to the divine realm and lingering in the mortal world. The next day, Ha Beck took So Ah to the supermarket to buy groceries, and they cooked rolled rice together. On the other side, Mu Ra watched the video again and found out the reason why Ha Beck didn't want to leave the mortal world. Mu Ra was furious and drove to So Ah's house. She wanted to tell the other party what her ancestors had done wrong. Despite Ha Beck's attempt to stop her, Mu Ra still dragged So Ah away. That day, when Su Ri returned home from overtime work, she gave Ha Beck all the money she had earned, telling him to let her know if he wanted to eat something or buy a book. As Ha Beck declined, Su Ri happily went to the dining table. When Su Ri sat down, she noticed the cup on the table. So Ah proudly announced that it was the gift Ha Beck had given her. Su Ri was astonished and turned to look at Ha Beck. She wondered if Ha Beck had really bought it for So Ah. Angry, Su Ri thought about how hard she had worked to earn that money, and Ha Beck used it to win So Ah's favor. Su Ri glanced at Ha Beck and left without eating. Ha Beck seemed to notice Su Ri's action and brought a tray of food in front of her, telling her to eat while it was still hot. Su Ri got up and looked at Ha Beck before leaving without turning back, despite Ha Beck calling after her. Now let's talk about So Ah's ancestors. It turned out that Ha Beck had once loved So Ah's ancestor deeply, but because she betrayed him to achieve immortality, the matriarch of the water god found out and decided to punish her. Ha Beck, feeling betrayed by his lover, didn't plead for mercy, making the queen even angrier. She wanted both So Ah's brother and Ha Beck to be held accountable. So Ah's brother promised to serve the gods for all eternity to make amends. Mu Ra mentioned these things to drive So Ah away from Ha Beck, not wanting him to experience heartache again. So Ah returned and blamed Ha Beck for not helping her ancestor back then, only wishing for him to return to the divine realm soon. As she watched Ha Beck walk away, So Ah couldn't help but shed tears. The next day the three of them had breakfast together as usual. Ha Beck proactively returned the phone to So Ah, and also told So Ah to help me handle the remaining belongings. Su Ri immediately realized that Ha Beck was about to leave this place. So Ah's eyes began to water. Ha Beck told her not to eat a lot of instant noodles in the future. If she cooks well, she still has to cook, right? Moreover, the house should also be cleaned regularly. Ha Beck told Su Ri to leave first and leave me here. 
Ha Beck knew that So Ah said those words last night because she wanted to let him leave, but So Ah's words still made him feel sad anyway. After saying that, Ha Beck stood up and prepared to leave. So Ah wanted to send him off, but Ha Beck refused, because I'm afraid that at the last minute I still won't be able to leave here. After Ha Beck left, So Ah couldn't bear it anymore and burst into tears. She liked Ha Beck but just dared to hide it in her heart and not say it out loud. So Ah is afraid that if she falls in love with Ha Beck, she will drag him down. Looking at Ha Beck's shadow leaving, so Ah could only raise her eyes to the sky so it wouldn't flow down. Ha Beck and Su Ri went to the temple. Su Ri walked in first. Ha Beck turned his head to look in So Ah's direction. He didn't know when they would see each other again this time of separation. After thinking for a while, Ha Beck slowly walked into the door. After Ha Beck leaves So Ah tries to return to her original life. She tried to cheer herself up and even planned a date. Everyone thinks that So Ah is doing very well now. But only So Ah herself cannot deceive herself. She still kept thinking about Ha Beck. Even when passing by, she saw the teddy bear that Ha Beck had hugged her and bought it. Look at the cup Ha Beck used, and sat on the bed Ha Beck used to lie on. Read the book Ha Beck once read. That's all So Ah can do when she misses her partner. At this moment, So Ah couldn't hold it any longer. But the memory of Ha Beck wrapped itself around So Ah so tightly that she couldn't breathe. Even when So Ah goes to work, she imagines that Ha Beck is talking to her. But in the blink of an eye, Ha Beck disappeared. Ya Ya here found out that the person who Yi likes is not her but So Ah and is very angry. Ya Ya was driving while calling her grandfather, asking him to help shut down So Ah's clinic. The next day, the staff from the management office began to come and clean up the belongings. Suddenly, a neurotic patient appeared and loudly refused anyone to move the belongings. When no one listened to him, he acted recklessly. This was the patient who believed that there were superheroes in the world. Shortly afterward, everyone was taken to the police station. So Ah was trying to explain, but it seemed to have no effect. Finally, Hu Yi arrived at the police station and smoothly resolved everything. Hu Yi hinted that he wanted to take So Ah home, but she refused. Later, she dragged her tired body down the street. Hu Yi, worried, called her to ask if she had returned home. They spoke over the phone, but So Ah didn't know that Hu Yi had been silently watching over her. When So Ah was about to turn into an alley, someone in front of her caused her to faint. That man could make women fall in love endlessly. So Ah sat at the dining table, waiting for Ha Beck to prepare breakfast for her. After brushing her teeth and washing her face, she returned to find a sumptuous meal already set on the table, even more lavish than dinner. They both sat down to have breakfast together, looking at the table of food that Ha Beck had prepared for her. So Ah was so touched that she was almost on the verge of tears. Ha Beck, noticing this, proactively put a spoon into her hand and sincerely urged her to eat quickly. So Ah obediently nodded. Just then, the doorbell rang, and it turned out to be Hu Yi bringing keys for So Ah. So Ah promptly invited him into the house and she couldn't let him stand outside. Ha Beck mentioned that they only had breakfast in the morning and didn't have tea to drink. Ha Beck thought that Hu Yi would withdraw because of this, but Hu Yi said he would have dinner and then leave. And so the battle between the two men officially began. Hu Yi even praised So Ah's cooking skills, but Ha Beck cut in, pointing out many of her shortcomings. He claimed that So Ah's cooking was terrible, and she even snored in her sleep, so he always had to lift her onto the bed. Every morning when he went to shower, she would peek and act shy. Hu Yi, of course, understood Ha Beck's intentions, but he couldn't afford to lose. He claimed that the piece of land where So Ah's clinic was located belonged to him, which made So Ah very happy. After eating, Ha Beck asked So Ah to bring him two cups of tea. When he saw the cup, Ha Beck immediately said he wanted his cup. He just did that to show off his position. So Ah said, let's use this cup for now. Ha Beck faltered if you want me to use this then I'll use it. His words made So Ah very stunned. Then the two men sat and talked to each other. The two began to compete with each other. One said he had power and the other boasted that he had money. Before returning, Hu Yi specially invited So Ah to come to his farm to play. When Ha Beck heard that, he didn't let her go. But now Hu Yi mentioned the issue of compensation. You have to make money quickly to settle this contract. Then he turned around and left. Ha Beck also understood that So Ah came to the farm because of the land issue. So he called Mu to borrow money. But as a result, Mu Ra directly hung up the phone. Not giving up, he called An Bin and the other person also flatly refused. Wait until you return to the divine world and I'll deal with you guys. The next day So Ah goes to Hu Yi's farm. So Ah said that Ha Beck works here Hu Yi will have to pay him a salary worthy of his status. When asked how much money, So Ah shyly said the amount. And also said he had to deduct the contract violation fee for himself. The two looked at each other and smiled. Then Hu Yi picked up the shovel and went to work. Hu Yi reminded the other that farming work is extremely difficult. To make So Ah happy Ha Beck poured the water she gave her on her head and asked if this was attractive. So Ah smiled then dried his hair for him. But all these images were seen by Hu Yi standing far away. He knew that So Ah had feelings for Ha Beck. But even so, Hu Yi could not control his own emotions. 
After dispersing for the day, the two agreed to meet at the farm the next day for work. Mu Ra suddenly appeared, bearing good news for Ha Bek, explaining that was why she was dressed so extravagantly. She handed Ha Bek a red card and informed him that the training session on Friday had arrived. Ha Bek had to return to the Divine Realm. Before leaving, he reminded that if he insisted on staying in the mortal world, he would have to bear the consequences as the girl was standing on the bridge, ready to end her life. At that moment, the girl's father discovered her. However, she had already planned her departure, and her father's arrival was too late. He ran to grab her, but it was too late. He didn't know how to swim, so he jumped down with his daughter. He used all his strength to push her up, and at the critical moment, she woke up and swam to the surface. The father watched her regain consciousness and slowly sank beneath the water. He departed without being able to say anything to his daughter. So Ah vividly remembered that painful day, constantly blaming herself, believing that her father wouldn't have passed away if not for her. How could she accept this reality? But now her father couldn't hear her words anymore. So Ah grasped Ha Beck's leg, hoping that he could save her father. Ha Beck knelt down and told So Ah that once a person had passed away, there was no way to bring them back. So Ah knew that, but the pain she felt was intense, all because of her. So Ah stood up suddenly and prepared to jump into the lake, but Ha Beck held her back, as he also had no way to save her father, let alone a mortal like So Ah. Ha Beck embraced So Ah tightly, knowing that this pain would follow her for the rest of her life. On the other side, Sang Yu told everyone that So Ah's father couldn't wake up, and the reason why his body remained intact was that he had the symbol of the divine on him. He feared that if the mark was removed, the body would turn into smoke. Ha Beck helped So Ah sink into sleep and sat there recalling So Ah's words from before, about how divine beings were present to fulfill the wishes of humans. He decided to use his power to help So Ah, knowing that the price to pay would be losing all traces of his existence in the mortal world. The next day, An Bin and others came to find So Ah, knowing that Ha Bek had made a trade to help her. Mu Ra didn't want to witness Ha Bek destroying everything with his own hands. Everyone present advised Ha Bek to abandon his intention of not returning to the divine realm. So Ah unintentionally overheard their conversation and firmly told Ha Bek not to sacrifice himself to save her father. She cried and said to Ha Bek to let her father rest in peace under the lake forever. After bidding a final farewell to So Ah's unfortunate father, Ha Bek once again confessed his feelings to So Ah and then gave her a sweet kiss. Suddenly, So Ah felt that something was not right about Ha Bek's kiss. It turned out that Ha Bek had transferred all his power to So Ah through the kiss. Upon learning the truth, So Ah was overwhelmed with pain, as Ha Bek knew that once he returned to the divine realm, So Ah would risk jumping into the lake to meet her father. Subsequently, the two dived to the bottom of the lake together. Finally, So Ah met her father, whom she had been searching for for years. Even when using the power of her father's body, it still wouldn't move. But when So Ah lightly pulled his hand, he could move. Perhaps this was the power of the love between father and daughter, bringing her father back to the surface. After burying her father, Mu Ra and others appeared. Sang Yu told So Ah that the divine emblem would grant her one wish, enabling her to use it to make Ha Bek return to the divine realm. As he was about to activate the emblem, the divine guardian suddenly appeared to stop them. He asked So Ah if she truly wanted to use this wish for Ha Bek. Mu Ra intervened, stating that if So Ah didn't do it, Ha Bek wouldn't be able to return to the divine realm. The divine guardian asserted that the mission was completed, so why couldn't he return? Only then did Ha Bek react. It turned out that everything was just a test for him. Ha Bek had already returned to the divine realm, so So Ah could make her wish. He then disappeared. Sang Yu activated the power of So Ah's emblem, and she wished for Ha Bek to accompany her for the rest of her life. When she passed away, he would return to the divine realm as a good emperor. Ha Bek was moved and hugged So Ah tightly. But first, he had to return to the divine realm to resolve some matters. Time flew by like a blink of an eye and three years had passed. Mu Ra and An Bin were together, but So Ah still hadn't seen Ha Bek. When So Ah returned home tonight, she suddenly saw a young man standing at the door, waiting for her. It was Ha Bek who had disappeared for years. So Ah happily stepped closer to the man she loved. Ha Bek explained that the process of succession was extremely complicated and apologized for being late. So Ah walked ahead and embraced the man she had missed for so many years. Finally, the two lovers were reunited. The series came to an end, and the audience was thanked for following the story. The creators promised to meet the viewers in their upcoming series. Farewell and goodbye.